Today we're going to take a look at customizing Power Apps portals, specifically configuring Azure B2C, and we're going to use the preview feature. So let's set the stage for our uh, demo today. First, our use case, we're designing a Power Apps portal, and we want to configure an authentication provider. Right now we have local authentication enabled and we may have some accounts that have already used local authentication. So we're going to look and see how do those accounts get transferred from local to Azure B2C. How difficult is it? If we go to make.preview.powerops.com, when we launch the configuration, it will automatically guide us and we won't have to enter any information manually. A couple of things to keep in mind. You need an Azure B2C tenant before you start. The person who's going to configure B2C authentication must have access to that tenant. The portal owner is the person who configures authentication in the portal. And we need to navigate to make.preview.powerapps.com versus make.powerapps.com. To run the configuration tool, once we have our Azure B2C tenant in place, we can log into our portal authentication settings. We can launch configure and we'll be guided through a configuration of Azure B2C. Then when we log into our portal, we'll see Azure AD B2C as an option for registration. We're gonna do a demo now. We're gonna walk through what it looks like before B2C is configured. We're going to walk through Azure to see what is happening in Azure and what's there. Then we're going to launch and run our configuration tool. And then we'll go back and review the post configuration. Then we'll talk about the existing local and we'll create a new account and see what that looks like inside of our portal. Let us take a look now at what a portal looks like before Azure B2C is configured. We're at make.preview.powerapps.com. And let's go into our portal management studio. When Azure B2C is configured, there are some site settings which are labeled B2C. So I'm going to search for B2C. And we'll see that we have no B2C site settings. If I look at a few contacts, uh, Mr. Alex Baker is a local user. If I go to web authentication on the portal contact form, we'll see he has a security stamp that's related to his login. His login is enabled, and here's his username. If we go back to the list and open a record that has not registered in our portal, we'll see there's no username, security stamp, or login enabled here. So that's what our contacts look like with local authentication. Now let's go look at our portal authentication settings. We go to our portal. You can see it says type of portal on the right hand side. We'll go to settings and we'll go to authentication settings. Authentication setting for Azure Active Directory B2C not configured. It has a configure button. When it's configured, it will say enabled as we have local login enabled here. Now let's go to Azure. So I'm going to go to portal.azure.com. I'm going to find my Azure AD B2C tenant. So I'll type in Azure AD B2C. And this is my Azure AD B2C tenant. If I look on the left hand side, there's two areas that we want to point out. One is the applications. If I click app registrations, all applications, you'll see that we have an application here called Portal Dev Experience Virtual Solution. That's a different portal that I have configured. When we register our portal with Azure B2C, we will get a new application. Also, we're going to look at these things called user flows down under policy. The user flows get created, and these are the 
user flows that actually interface with the portal. They create the graphical interface. Uh, they contain sign-in and sign-up policies, multi-factor authentication, which attributes are used, and so forth. Uh, no need to worry about creating these when we use the Make Preview feature. These will be created automatically. So now we're going to go back to our portal configuration. Azure Active Directory B2C, the user I'm logged in here has access to this Azure tenant. And now we're going to run configure. When we run configure, um, it automatically assumes we're configuring Azure Active Directory B2C. We'll click next. And now you can see, do we want to create a new B2C tenant or do we want to use an existing B2C tenant? In this particular case, we're going to use a tenant. And this information was populated by the tool reaching out to Azure. If I had more than one tenant, I assume it would be here. If I had no tenants, I assume, or had no access, I'm assuming this list would be empty. Now we talked about the application. Now it says it failed to connect because I need to authenticate. Now I'm authenticated and it's asking us what we want the application view to be. So we're going to name it video app. I don't think it matters what you name it. And we're creating a new application. If we wanted to use an existing application, we could check existing. Now we talked about user flows. So let's put video app here, and video app here. And this tool is going to create the user flows for us. And we're done. That's how straightforward it is to configure Azure Active Directory B2C using the preview. Now let's go take a look at what happened in our environments, and then we'll test it. First off, you can see that Azure AD B2C is enabled now. We'll go to our apps. And we're going to launch the Portal Studio. If you've watched my other videos, when I launch the Portal Studio, I get a browse. And when I browse the website, it does portal cache clearing. So now when I click sign in, you'll see that we have Azure AD B2C. And we'll come back and test this in just a bit. Let's go to our portal management app. Before, we had no Azure B2C site settings. If I go to Site Settings now and search for anything with B2C in it, you'll see that the configuration has created some B2C settings. If you were to configure B2C manually, you would be copying and pasting all of this information into the manual tool. You can see it recognized the video app, video app, um, it has our portal URL here. It has the Active Directory tenant. This ID is actually the ID of the application itself. So now let's go to Azure. In Azure, if we go to Applications, I'm just going to click on Legacy. You can see that it registered a new app. And here's the application ID. Well, that was the ID that we saw in the Portal Management Studio. If I go to User Flows, I have two new user flows. You can see Video App, Password Reset, and Video App, Sign In, Sign Up. So next, let's go in and test. So sign in with an external account. I don't have an existing account, so I'm going to click Sign Up Now. 
And let me use my Hotmail. It's going to require a verification code. This ensures that we have a valid email. That's a setting in the user flow itself. You can actually turn that off. Once we verify the code, we can put in a password. You'll see the password requirement showing up here. Uh, those are also configured in the user flow. So a couple of things it's doing here, it's registering the information in Dataverse, and it's also creating a user record in Azure, and we'll go look at that. So we'll go home, and now we're logged into our portal. So let's click Sign Out. Now we're going to go back and look at a couple things. One, I want to look at the contact record that was just created. So I'm in Portal Management Contacts. Here's the Hotmail account. If I go to Web Authentication, you'll see this information is filled in. And you can see there's an external identity. This is what links the user to our Azure tenant. So when they try to log in, it knows where to go to check to see if it's a valid user. Now the other thing we want to do is force our old users, Mr. Alex Baker, to no longer use local, but to use Azure B2C. So I'm going to go back to my site settings. And we're going to look for our settings that have the word registration in them. And there's a setting that says local login deprecated. We're going to change that setting to true. So by changing that setting to true, you'll no longer be able to log in locally. So I'm going to go back to my portal studio and browse. Again, clearing the cache, making sure that that setting is in place. I'm going to click sign in. And now I'm going to try to use the local account for Alex. And since we deprecated local login, this shouldn't work. Ah, you'll notice it didn't work, and it says you signed in with an account that's no longer supported. So this answers the question of what happens to my local login users. They have to register with Azure AD B2C to be able to log in. So the same process, and you'll see our user is presented with the similar experience as someone who's logging up locally. So we talked about how an old account gets converted to a new account. And now let's go to Azure and let's check on one more thing. If I go to my B2C tenant and I look at users, you'll see that there's now an entry here for kurt.reynolds.hotmail.com. That was the user that we registered with when we registered in the B2C tenant. So every user that registers in your portal is going to get a user record here in the Azure B2C tenant. Thanks for watching. I hope it was informative. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. I will certainly get back to you. And hopefully we can make more videos in the future on customizing Power Apps portals. Thank you.